That's the London Telegraph. China currency devaluation signals end game, which is exactly what our guests have said the last week, is leaving the equity markets free to collapse under the weight of impossible expectations. Yes, false earnings, overvalued stocks, huge debts, derivatives. When the banking crisis crippled global markets seven years ago, central bankers stepped in as leaders of last resort, of lenders. Profligate private sector loans were moved onto the public sector balance sheet. And vast money printing gave the global economy room to heal. No, room for it to be even worse. Rats chewed our legs off, so they just gave us morphine. Time is now rapidly running out. From China to Brazil, the central banks have lost control. At the same time, the global economy is grinding to a halt. It is only a matter of time before stock market collapses under the weight of their lofty expectations and record valuations. And the 2.2 quadrillion we've been signed on to. That isn't our debt. The FTSE 100 has now erased its gains for the year. But there are signs things can get a whole lot worse. And people say, well, a correction of 10-20% is not a big deal globally because it's overvalued. But even the overvaluation can't prop up the derivatives and the debt. Do you understand? So if they cut interest rates anymore, it's impossible because they're already zero. It causes inflation. If they don't, it causes the economy to shut down even faster. And then this excellent article goes over it all. The difference is Gerald Salente, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who works with him at the Trends Journal, former uh, Wall Street Journal editor, the editor, former head of policy at the Treasury for Reagan, has been saying the same thing. Mr. Dent's been saying the same thing. Uh, Schiff's been saying the thing. We have the guest on. There's not many of them, but we have them who are more accurate than mainstream media. Mainstream media is trying to deceive the public while they themselves run to the hills and dig in like all hell's about to break loose. Here's another article. Ron Paul, Fed may not hike because everything is vulnerable. Did you know that the U.S. no longer has any strategic grain reserves at all? That's a Michael Snyder report, economic collapse blog, Infowars.com. Greek government on its last legs while Angela Merkel faces growing rebellion in Berlin. Yeah, because no amount of bailouts will fix the debt. It's just more to the very bankers. We loan them the money to bail them out, and then we're in debt to them. So that's some of the news on the economic front. I've got a whole other stack we'll go over with Gerald Salente. But, Gerald, everything seems to be spiraling out of control. Escalations in military operations. Trying to topple Assad for ISIS. Uh, escalating military conflict with Russia on its border. This is the stuff we saw before World War I and World War II. As you said, when the economy goes down, they take you to war historically to divert attention so the crooks don't go to jail. Hillary is on the verge of maybe getting indicted. Woodward signals this by saying it's Nixonian and it's not going to look good when it comes out. Trump now turns against her. What do you think is going on, Gerald Salente? Well, on the economic front, I mean, you really summed it up because it all ties together. I think you began with this immigration wave coming over. And when you go south of the border, even below Mexico way, it's currency crisis after currency crisis, commodity crash after commodity crash. Current events form future trends. What happened yesterday over in Brazil? Well, they had a wonderful time. About a half a million people turned out to protest against the government. How come? Well, they're in a recession. Inflation is skyrocketing, and the currency is plummeting. Take a look over there in Chile, not too far away. Hey, you want some really hot real estate? I can get you in a real good deal on some commercial stuff just built. I could rent it to you for almost nothing because copper prices have collapsed. They're at their six-year lows. Go back to Brazil. They're not exporting natural resources the way they were not before because you also talked about China. China gobbles up over 50% of most of the world's exports of raw materials each year. And we saw their numbers come out for July. What was exports down? Almost 9%. Keep going. Mexico? Hey, how about that peso? Yeah, it's back to what? Oh, when they revalued it in 1993, those levels? Yeah, those levels. You think you're going to see immigration? Hey, how about Colombia? 
oh, it's wonderful with those slumping gas prices and oil prices. They're not exporting either. You think they want to leave there? So you go after country after country from South America, go to from Africa, South Africa. Hey, how about those gold prices, palladium prices? How about Australia, Rio Tinto? How about Anglo, uh, Anglo American? How about them Anglo American firing 53,000 people because they're not producing? Where are they going? You mentioned the wars in Libya brought to us by our Nobel Peace Prize winner, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Susan Rice. Total disarray. When Gaddafi was in there, they weren't flooding out of the shores of Tripoli into, into Italy, into Greece. Hundreds die a week going across the Med just to Italy. One island in Greece, Lesbos, has 156,000 refugees on one tiny island. This is the collapse of the world. But our media tells us everything's fine, and Gerald Salente and Alex Jones are fear porn dealers. Yeah, well, again, we just stick with the facts. They suck up to the people that pay them their money. So you, what you're looking at is a global collapse. Oh, I forgot about Yemen. Yeah, the United States and our allies, the beheaders in chief. How many things slaughtered so far beheaded in Saudi Arabia this year? I think it's up to 127. ISIS has a long way to go to catch up to them. They're slaughtering people in the poorest country in the Middle East, Yemen. Where are they flooding to? They're flooding into Greece. They're flooding into Italy. Afghanistan, you mentioned Greece, flooding into Greece. You look at what's going on in Egypt. You look what's going on in Iraq. You look what's going on in Somalia, Sudan. Every, it's, it's chaos. The global economy has collapsed. Commodity prices are down to 2002 levels. We were in a recession in 2002. And Just Gerald, I looked it up. Since they created the National Grain Reserves in World War II, it's never been empty. The government has exhausted the grain. I, I mean, they've never done that. And you look, look at coal, look at, as I said, commodity prices, corn. From corn to coal to copper to iron ore, everything has collapsed. China's not buying this stuff. Look at the data. Look what just came out today. Stay there. Stay there. Okay. Gerald Salente, Trends Forecaster, joins us. This is important, folks. We're not being negative. We want you to get ready. What you don't know can and will hurt you in many cases. That's why we're here trying to follow exactly what's happening. It's kind of like Japan building nuclear reactors right down the mountain from a quasi-active volcano. It's not a good idea. Well, letting private banks and brokerage firms create 2.2 quadrillion in the last few decades of fake money and then letting themselves leverage that to buy up the world and then have us sign on to it, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. And then siphon off production, raise taxes to the point that civilization starts to crumble with 7.5 billion people. It's a time bomb. And if you look at the footage of the illegals in Europe coming in on boats and running across into the fences by the thousands at a time. Now we have footage like that in the United States. And then the incentive to bring people here and get free stuff, it is a ticking time bomb, a total ticking time bomb. And this is about the political takeover of this country. Gerald Salente, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Again, thank you for joining us here on the Alex Jones Show. Gerald Salente from Trends Research. Dot com continue you you were getting into the world melting down around us people now know it's like trump says make america great again well i thought we're already great according to mainstream media are people waking up to the fact that we are not in this wonderful economy like they've been saying oh absolutely you know the polls all show it and as i was saying the current events are forming future trends you know you just look at what the numbers that came out of japan their second quarter gdp it was down 1.6%. This is after pumping in trillions, trillions of yen under the guise of Abenomics. You remember, they did it, by the way, just as the Fed announced that they were going to end quantitative easing 
Three days later, back in October a year ago, the, the Japanese pulled the stunt that they were going to dump in more money into Abenomics, and it boosted up the economy. Fake. It only boosts up the equity markets, as all this cheap dough is done. The facts are right before us. You have the yen sinking in value, and they still can't export enough stuff to have a positive GDP. This is simply basic. The number is right there. What does it do with the yuan uh, being driven down, and is it doomsday clock for global market crash one minute to midnight like the Telegraph says? Well, again, you know what I say. You could. Everybody knows a little bit about history. Try this one on. Currency wars, trade wars, world wars. That was World War II. You're looking at the facts. Over here in New York, they just had the manufacturing index come out. Alex, it's down 15%. What a recovery. I guess it's the cold winter, huh? Well, look, I mean, you know, it's, it's a hot summer. Look, it, numbers are in front of us. They're looking, we're looking at numbers. That index, by the way, it's the lowest since April of 2009. Go back two months ago, the IMF came out and forecast that growth in 2015 is back to 2009 levels. And then you're looking, as I said, the commodity prices. Hey, you're, up, you're over there in Texas. You remember all those boom towns everywhere from North Dakota, Wyoming, every boom, boom with the shale. What's going on now? Last week you saw, uh, what was it, Samson's over there bankruptcy in Oklahoma. And oh, the fall, the, the fall of the fracking industry and the domestic drilling is going to just devastate at least six, seven states. It's going to be much bigger than the subprime crisis, in my view. Well, look again. Look at the facts. You saw all of these, these hedge funds and all of these private equity groups and speculators and banks dumping tons of money into there, boosting up their industry, and the junk bonds in the United States, 15% to 20% are in the energy industry. It doesn't take a genius to figure this one out. The thing is collapsing in front of everybody's eyes. The facts are all there. They cannot be covered up. Can they be manipulated? Of course they can. You know, we talk about gold prices. By the way, they're moving back up. What brought gold prices down? Hey, how about over there in China when the Shanghai Gold Index shorted gold in two minutes in August, in July rather, when the Japanese markets were closed? They usually trade about 16 tons a day. In two minutes on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, they shorted 33 tons. So. The collapse is here, but the crooks, criminals, cowards, liars, freaks, and fools called the Federal Reserve and the governments around the world will do anything to manipulate it as they did with the market today That's right. in the United States. Stay there. Let's talk about that when we come back. Stay there. We come back. Long segment. We'll get into how they're manipulating and skimming off the top as they sink the ship and as they run to their armored bunkers. I mean, what are they thinking? Stay with us. By the way, we are now a national distributor for a bunch of the best optics and G-Shock watches, you name it, through HD Firearms. We sell through the InfoWarsStore.com platform at the discounted retail price. You can search hard and find somebody else who's undercutting and, and maybe find them cheaper, but they are the highest quality super watches, basically, the original, but it's just been updated over and over again. G-Shock is what most of your special forces operators and uh, others wear. They've got very affordable ones, right up to super expensive ones. Uh, but they are the creme de la creme, the full selection at InfoWarsStore.com. You get a G-Shock watch, get some great night vision optics, whatever it is you're looking for, from inexpensive to the creme de la creme at the lowest prices, laser sights, uh, you name it. This is what all the special forces operators that run head down they drop ship for us, have distributor ships for what they believe is the best. And they have a lot of uh, teams in the field, Army and Navy and Marines, that are using uh, basically th th their chosen rigs and setups. But this is all just really good stuff. Uh, it's, it's, 
Because you go to other shopping carts and it'll have just everything, including crud mixed in. So people that don't know what they're doing end up buying crap that sometimes costs even more than the real deal. And then it's important to support folks and, and get his free updates. You can sign up via email at trendsresearch.com or sign up for the quarterly magazine. Invaluable information to read yourself, but give to friends and family uh, at trendsresearch.com. All right, Gerald Salente, you got cut off by the break. Uh, you were getting into where you see all this going. And then I want to shift gears into some of the culture control and ask you what you think the elite's endgame is. But they're literally counting their money up on the deck of the Titanic as it's listing. They're not even smart enough to get in the lifeboats first. I guess some elites are. How close are we to the big event, or is it just still this slow slide and like Baghdad Bob, his U.S. tanks are two miles away and fighter jets are flying behind him bombing. He's going, the Americans have been kicked out of Iraq. They're not even in the country. I mean, it seems like that's what they're doing, denying what's happening in the economy. Yeah, well, they are. I just want to comment, though, also that how important it is that the listeners support the products and buy the products that you're selling because of the highest quality and to put their money where their mind is. Because if they don't support people like yourself, the Trends Journal, and others that are putting out this information that you can't find anywhere else, they're really stopping the progress of freedom. Because for us to make freedom ring, you know, we're in a capitalist society, and there's nobody behind the curtain giving us this dough to make it happen. And I know how hard you work, and you know how hard we work to make it happen. So I really urge everyone to do the best you can, to spend the most you can in supporting enterprises like PrisonPlanet.com and the products that they have, those high-quality products, and, of course, the Trends Journal. So in, in looking at where the real money is putting their money, it's flooding out of China. They're, they're dumping out of there as quick as they can because they know the collapse is underway. You look at also in the United States, you're looking at exodus is coming in a lot of the equity markets. They're getting their dough out. A lot of people expect it to happen, but they're only keeping the suckers in. It's like what they did in China. You know, some 80% of that Shanghai index was supported by the government promoting it to the little people. Hold on a minute. I'm going to give you the floor, but I want to go back here because I live in Austin, one of the only boom towns in the United States. And, I, and it's so politically correct, I don't say this meanly, I'm making an observation. When I do go to nice areas of Austin or go to a nice outdoor mall or something, just so happen to be near luxury places, there's just rich Chinese in $200,000 Mercedes and Ferraris, and their kids are driving Ferraris and, or, or brand new $100,000 Audis. And it, it's like, all the rich Mexicans seem to have moved to Austin, which, you know, fine with me, you know, that makes it more prosperous. The rich Chinese are like parachuting in. You were talking about that a few years ago, that the rich Chinese were leaving. That shows they know it's going under. So now they're trying to just pump it up with the general public in. That's what's so scary. So the Chinese and Mexicans are running to the U.S., but the banker robber barons are running to, to New Zealand and to armored redoubts in the Ozarks. Doesn't that really signify the, the big crisis is almost here? Sorry. Yes, I believe the crisis is going to happen before the end of the year. And, you know, we're putting, you know, it's, it's a forecast. You know, could we be wrong? Of course we can. And, and you know the Trends Journal, it's 54 pages, full color. There's not one advertisement in there. So what I have to say... Is, is, has nothing to do with people paying me to say it because we're getting advertising money. And, and so I am bullish on gold. I've said it when gold was down, you know, another $50 lower than it is now, that I believe that the bottom of gold was around 1100 1050 And I still believe that's the bottom. The upside potential to me is well over 2000 And you're seeing it going back up because... All of a sudden, they lumped gold in as another commodity that was going down. No, gold is a safe haven commodity. And no, gold is not pegged to the dollar in the sense that where the dollar gold goes, go gold goes. The only reason the dollar has any strength at all is because of all these other economies I was talking about that are collapsing. Look what's going on in, in, in Russia. 
You know, the, the GDP is down, what, 4.5%? Look what's going on in China, as I mentioned. You, you, you have a GDP that most experts believe is around 4%, and already where it is at 7% with their official number, that's down to two decades low. So gold is the safe haven commodity. You don't peg it, at least I don't, to whether it's going to be inflation, whether it's... No, it has nothing to do with that to me. It has to do with... Here, I'll give you an example. Suppose you lived in Brazil. Suppose you see your Brazilian real now going back, what, to 16-year lows, and gold is pegged on a dollar, and all of a sudden you see your currency crashing against the dollar. What if you own gold? Wouldn't you be better off, hey, you don't even have to go that far. Take a trip up to Canada. Yeah, look, they're in a recession. Take a look at the Canadian dollar. Oh, wow, the loonies losing it. It's down to 2,004 levels. Hey, how come? Ah, costs a lot of money, doesn't it, to produce that oil out of those tar sands? And oil prices are way down. Don't it? Oh, you talked about New Zealand? Woof! Watch that one go down, Alex. As milk prices and dairy prices are plummeting, again, it's commodities across the board. New Zealand's not doing so well anymore. So you're going to look at the Aussie dollar, six-year lows. I mentioned Anglo-American, Rio Tinto, whether it's Royal Dutch Shell, layoffs by the tens no, of No, no, you, you're right. You predicted that, that the 2008 thing wouldn't work, and within 10 years, 7 to 10 years, it would fall apart. And the media just keeps saying, no, everything's fine, everything's wonderful. 2 plus 2 equals 5 or 20 or whatever, whatever Obama says it is today. Let's look at now other areas of this. Looking at China, looking at Japan, looking at Europe, looking at Greece, looking at all the things that are happening. The elite go into Gaddafi, who was investing most of the country's money in building up an infrastructure in Africa that the globalists didn't control. They blew it up, destabilized the whole continent. Same thing with Syria, overthrowing our allies in Egypt, shutting down our power plants here, only giving central inside guys the free money from the banker bailouts, the free interest money. Clearly, the globalists are trying to destroy the economy of the world while exempting themselves from their own rules and regulations to consolidate it, but then they destroy the planet that they're stealing at the same time, but they can't seem to help their predatory instinct. Where does all this end up going? Well, they'll try to create sectarian, divide and conquer, balkanization. They'll say a sorority video showing a bunch of white girls is racist, but, you know, it's okay to have a black bar or Hispanic bar or whatever. Uh, they will have people wiping their butts with Confederate flags as a distraction. You know, it just goes on and on these little petty issues while all of us lose our freedoms. How do we cut through that fog and let people realize that this is a crisis? And, and here's my other question. I kind of alluded to it. Is there a method to the white shoe boys, as you call them, madness? Because they clearly want to destabilize and make everybody else uh, bankrupt they don't control. Don't they get they're screwing over the markets that allow them to operate? No, they're ruthless and they're and they're driven. They don't have the they don't have the morality to think past money and power. So it's not even, you know, again, you, you just look by their deeds, you shall know them. So they don't understand that destroying the earth is destroying their lives as well. This is who they are. And on this racial issue, a good friend of mine. Uh, just this past weekend had an issue where she was trying to back out and a bunch of black people surrounded a car and, and saying, you know, colored people count. And this is a woman, you know, she's the furthest thing from a racist you ever want to see. And, and so what they're doing is they're using that divide and conquer. If African Americans have anybody to point their finger at with hate and disgust, it should be at the president of the United States. This isn't a racist nation. They're making it one. Let's make this really clear. If this was a racist nation, are there racists in the nation? Of course there are. Hey, there are people that don't like Italians, don't like Hispanics, don't like Jews. You're always going to find ignorant people. But a racist nation would never 
have elected a black president. Plus, everybody Killing wouldn't be Harris. trying to get here. We're not perfect, but, we, but we've been a really cool country, and they're just diverting, getting us all fighting with each other because the globalists are robbing us. It's so stupid. And, and Alex, just to keep making the point, if it was a racist nation, we would not have had the top guy ahead of law as a black man, Eric Holder, and now Loretta Lynch, another black woman. We would not have the head of the United Nations. It was Susan Rice. You would not have a secretary of state as Condoleezza Rice or, or Colin Powell or others. So let's not call it a racist nation. If you want to point the finger, point it at Obama. Point it at Holder. Point it at that low-life man who never convicted one head of the white shoe boys. Too white for you, Eric? You're afraid of them, Eric, as you're putting all the other people of color in jail? Hey, Eric. Hey, Miss Lynch. Yeah, Lynch, how about you? How about you who convicted five banks? Oh, excuse me. Six of felonies, convicted of felonies for rigging the LIBOR rate and the Forex market, and did not, did not prosecute one. So if African Americans have a problem with the government, why don't you call it what it is? Your own people have sold you out for the white shoe boys. Well, absolutely. A white president couldn't get away with doubling the black unemployment. It's not even an issue. The black people are getting totally screwed over by every metric. And so, of course, Obama's screaming race all day is a diversion, and it's working. As I said, they're lynching us. That's who Lynch is lynching. She won't lynch the boys on Wall Street. They only go after we, the little people. Hey, the FBI got a couple in Mississippi that was going to go to Syria and join ISIS. What, are you kidding me or what? Big deal. That's who they're going after. They make a big deal out of little news as they give their guys a free ride and they're causing hate and division among us. And it's terrible. And, and it's going to continue unless we, the people, bring morality and justice. Absolutely. Stay there. Stay there, Gerald. This is not America, this tyranny. It's a cult of control. They want us dumbed down and confused at each other's throats while they rob us all blind, no matter what color we are. Training our children that they're prisoners. Banning dodgeball. Banning speech. Generation by generation, the freedom disappears. And now we're hitting the wall. Here's an article at Infowars.com. It's amazing. There's video. Little Terror Airport Security Confiscates Kids Fart Blaster Toy from the movie Minions. And it looks like a purple ray gun speaker machine. Doesn't even look like a gun. Any moron can tell that this is a toy. But this is the idea of the nanny state. Uh, in summation... You say you see us hitting a major bump in the road by the end of the year. A lot of folks are saying that now. I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But the indicators are there. Ron Paul saying it. Uh, how long can this go on? And 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 how? What are the? What's the main scenario you see? Well, when we, you talk, we're talking about the racial divide. That's going to really pit people against each other. So it's going to become very ugly uh, unless we have somebody that's leading us that brings morality back into the show. And, uh, you know, Ron Paul was the last person that was out there that was really doing anything across the board of, of making something like that happen. And I just don't see that happening now. So the racial divide will worsen. You're going to have a lot of social unrest. And it's global. As I said, there's, there were half a million people yesterday in Brazil. It's happening all over the world. So they're going to divide and conquer is going to be the scenario. Oh, and you mentioned about... Homeland Security, I believe the head of that is a, a black person, too. So how about that for a racist country? You know, we got a guy like that arresting little kids. For fart well, it turns out Nancy Pelosi has her staff out running this, even in D.C., who lives in the lap of luxury. 
I mean, imagine you're just pulling out your car and people surround you chanting at you because you're white. Don't they understand that's the opposite of what Martin Luther King said? They have no idea what you stand for, but it's because you're white you must have done something because MSNBC said so? Again, that's the way they're selling it, so there's a divide and conquer. It's a very, going to be a very... It's going to be a very difficult time coming. And again, as you know, Alex, we're launching Occupy Peace over here in Colonial Kingston. And here, here's the, the photo. But it's more than just peace overseas. It's to stop this mindset. It's to bring peace back to the United States. That's why it's OccupyPeace.us. Because if we don't have it, we're going to lose it. And we're doing everything we can to make that happen. Because they're just dividing us more and more. It's clear something big is coming because the weaponization of CNN, MSNBC, the most obvious clan level race baiting uh, is, is just so dirty, so nasty, so transparent, but it's working like a charm. Well, just like what happened when they, they killed a kid, what, North Carolina, South Carolina, that didn't do anything and he was white. They don't they don't show that, they, you know, so they so they're doing it. They're making it a racial issue when it's much bigger than that. Yeah, there are some out-of-control militarized psycho cops, and it, it's a terrible situation, but killing each other and surrounding an old white lady's car isn't going to fix it. It's going to maybe turn her into a racist if she wasn't one. Gerald, great job. Thank you so much. Look forward to having you on soon. Thank you for all your important work. Thank you, and thank you for all you do. Thank you. I'm going to come back with a bit of overdrive and some issues we didn't cover. Infowars.com forward slash show to find that feed. Support our local affiliates. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. today. Stay there, stay I, there. I, I, Gerald Salente, Trends Forecaster, joins us. This is important, folks. We're not being negative. We want you to get ready. What you don't know can and will hurt you in many cases. That's why we're here trying to follow exactly what's happening. It's kind of like Japan building nuclear reactors right down the mountain from a quasi-active volcano. It's not a good idea. Well, letting private banks and brokerage firms create 2.2 quadrillion in the last few decades of fake money and then letting themselves leverage that to buy up the world and then have us sign on to it, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. And then siphon off production, raise taxes to the point that civilization starts to crumble with 7.5 billion people. It's a time bomb. And if you look at the footage of the illegals in Europe coming in on boats and running across into the fences by the thousands at a time. Now we have footage like that in the United States. And then the incentive to bring people here and get free stuff, it is a ticking time bomb, a total ticking time bomb. And this is about the political takeover of this country. Gerald Salente, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Again, thank you for joining us here on the Alex Jones Show. Gerald Salente from Trends Research. Dot com continue you you were getting into the world melting down around us people now know it's like trump says make america great again well i thought we're already great according to mainstream media are people waking up to the fact that we are not in this wonderful economy like they've been saying oh absolutely you know the polls all show it and as i was saying the current events are forming future trends you know you just look at what the numbers that came out of japan their second quarter gdp it was down 1.6%. This is after pumping in trillions, trillions of yen under the guise of Abenomics. You remember, they did it, by the way, just as the Fed announced that they were going to end quantitative easing. Three days later, back in October a year ago, the, the Japanese pulled the stunt that they were going to dump in more money into Abenomics, and it boosted up the economy. Fake. It only boosts up the equity market. It says all this cheap. So you go after country after country from South America, 
go to sit from Africa, South Africa. Hey, how about those gold prices, palladium prices? How about Australia, Rio Tinto? How about Anglo, uh, Anglo-American? How about them Anglo-American firing 53,000 people because they're not producing? Where are they going? You mentioned the wars in Libya brought to us by our Nobel Peace Prize winner, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Susan Rice, total disarray. When Gaddafi was in there, they weren't flooding out of the shores of Tripoli into, into Italy, into Greece. Hundreds die a week going across the Med just to Italy. One island in Greece, Lesbos, has 156,000 refugees on one tiny island. This is the collapse of the world. But our media tells us everything's fine, and Gerald Salente and Alex Jones are fear porn dealers. Yeah, well, again, we just stick with the facts. They suck up to the people that pay them their money. So you, what you're looking at is a global collapse. Oh, I forgot about Yemen. Yeah, the United States and our allies, the beheaders in chief. How many things slaughter so far beheaded in Saudi Arabia this year? I think it's up to 127. ISIS has a long way to go to catch up to them. They're slaughtering people in the poorest country in the Middle East, Yemen. Where are they flooding to? They're flooding into Greece. They're flooding into Italy. Afghanistan, you mentioned Greece, flooding into Greece. You look at what's going on in Egypt. You look what's going on in Iraq. You look what's going on in Somalia, Sudan. Every, it's, it's chaos. The global economy has collapsed. Commodity prices are down to 2,002 levels. We were in a recession in 2002. And Just Gerald, getting... I oh. looked it up. Since they created the National Grain Reserves in World War II, it's never been empty. The government has exhausted the grain. I, I mean, they've never done that. And you look, look, at coal, look at, as I said, commodity prices, corn. From corn to coal to copper to iron ore, everything has collapsed. China's not buying this stuff. Look at the data that was done. The facts are right before us. You have the yen sinking in value, and they still can't export enough stuff to have a positive GDP. This is simply basic. The number is right there. What does it do with the yuan uh, being driven down, and is it doomsday clock for global market crash one minute to midnight like the Telegraph says? Well, again, you know what I say. You could. Everybody knows a little bit about history. Try this one on. Currency wars, trade wars, world wars. That was World War II. You're looking at the facts. Over here in New York, they just had the manufacturing index come out. Alex, it's down 15%. What a recovery. I guess it's the cold winter, huh? Well, look. I mean, you know, it's, it's a hot summer. Look. It, numbers are in front of us. They're looking, we're looking at numbers. That index, by the way, it's the lowest since April of 2009. Go back two months ago, the IMF came out and forecast that growth in 2015 is back to 2009 levels. And then you're looking, as I said, to commodity prices. Hey, you're, up, you're over there in Texas. You remember all those boom towns everywhere from North Dakota, Wyoming, every boom, boom with the shale. What's going on now? Last week you saw, uh, what was it, Samson's over there bankruptcy in Oklahoma. And oh, the fall, you... the fall of the fracking industry and the domestic drilling is going to just devastate at least six, seven states. It's going to be much bigger than the subprime crisis, in my view. Well, look again. Look at the facts. You saw all of these, these hedge funds and all of these private equity groups and speculators and banks dumping tons of money into there boosting up their industry, and the junk bonds in the United States, 15% to 20% are in the energy industry. It doesn't take a genius to figure this one out. The thing is collapsing in front of everybody's eyes. The facts are all there. They cannot be covered up. Can they be manipulated? Of course they can. You know, we talk about gold prices. By the way, they're moving back up. What brought gold prices down? Hey, how about over there in China when the Shanghai Gold Index 
Sure. In Berlin. Yeah, because no amount of bailouts will fix the debt. It's just more to the very bankers. We loan them the money to bail them out, and then we're in debt to them. So that's some of the news on the economic front. I've got a whole nother stack we'll go over with Gerald Salente. But, Gerald, everything seems to be spiraling out of control. Escalations in military operations. Trying to topple Assad for ISIS. Uh, escalating military conflict with Russia on its border. This is the stuff we saw before World War I and World War II. As you said, when the economy goes down, they take you to war, historically, to divert attention so the crooks don't go to jail. Hillary is on the verge of maybe getting indicted. Woodward signals this by saying it's Nixonian and it's not going to look good when it comes out. Trump now turns against her. What do you think's going on, Gerald Salente? Well, on the economic front, I mean, you really summed it up because it all ties together. I think you began with this immigration wave coming over. And when you go south of the border, even below Mexico way, it's currency crisis after currency crisis, commodity crash after commodity crash. Current events form future trends. What happened yesterday over in Brazil? Well, they had a wonderful time. About a half a million people turned out to protest against the government. How come? Well, they're in a recession. Inflation is skyrocketing, and the currency is plummeting. Take a look over there in Chile, not too far away. Hey, you want some really hot real estate? I can get you in a real good deal on some commercial stuff just built. I could rent it to you for almost nothing because copper prices have collapsed. They're at their six-year lows. Go back to Brazil. They're not exporting natural resources the way they were before because you also talked about China. China gobbles up over 50% of most of the world's exports of raw materials each year. And we saw their numbers come out for July. What was exports down? Almost 9%. Keep going. Mexico? Hey, how about that peso? Yeah, it's back to what? Oh, when they revalued it in 1993, those levels? Yeah, those levels. You think you're going to see immigration? Hey, how about Colombia? Oh, it's wonderful with those slumping gas prices and oil prices. They're not exporting either. You think they want to leave there? That's the London Telegraph. China currency devaluation signals in game, which is exactly what our guests have said the last week, is leaving the equity markets free to collapse under the weight of impossible expectations. Yes, false earnings, overvalued stocks, huge debts, derivatives. When the banking crisis crippled global markets seven years ago, central bankers stepped in as leaders of last resort, of lenders. Profligate private sector loans were moved onto the public sector balance sheet. And vast money printing gave the global economy room to heal. No, room for it to be even worse. Rats chewed our legs off, so they just gave us morphine. Time is now rapidly running out. From China to Brazil, the central banks have lost control. At the same time, the global economy is grinding to a halt. It is only a matter of time before stock market collapses under the weight of their lofty expectations and record valuations. And the $2.2 quadrillion we've been signed on to that isn't our debt. The F. TSE 100 has now erased its gains for the year, but there are signs things could get a whole lot worse. And people say, well, a correction of 10, 20% is not a big deal globally because it's overvalued. But even the overvaluation can't prop up the derivatives and the debt. Do you understand? So if they cut interest rates anymore, it's impossible because they're already zero. It causes inflation. If they don't, it causes the economy to shut down even faster. And then this excellent article goes over it all. The difference is Gerald Salente, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who works with him at the Trends Journal, former uh, Wall Street Journal editor, the editor, former head of policy at the Treasury for Reagan, has been saying the same thing. Mr. Dent's been saying the same thing. Uh, Schiff's been saying the thing. We have the guest on. There's not many of them, but we have them who are more accurate than mainstream media. Mainstream media is trying to deceive the public while they themselves run to the hills and dig in like all hell's about to break loose. Here's another article. Ron Paul, Fed may not hike because everything is vulnerable. Did you know that the U.S. no longer has any strategic grain reserves at all? 
That's a Michael Schneider report, economic collapse blog, InfoWars.com. Greek government on its last legs while Angela Merkel faces growing rebellion.